loading QS profiles. So how does DDS load QS profiles? Well, in the C and traditional C++, um, the uh, older C Sharp API, as well as the Java API, it's actually loaded by the domain participant factory object. Um, in the modern C++ API or uh, the new C Sharp API, uh, you access uh, and control the loading of QS profiles through the QS provider object, which actually underneath uh, uses a domain participant factory. Now, as we know, QS profiles are, are defined by XML strings, uh, but these XML strings can be stored in files, so the uh, connects can load the XML strings from a file, but they can also be loaded uh, through environment variables. You could actually set an environment variable to an XML string and uh, you can configure Connects DDS to uh, read the environment variable and parse that string. And of course, you could always set it in API. And Connects DDS can do all of these different uh, methods at the same time, so QS profiles can be loaded from multiple locations, including multiple files. The loading actually happens automatically uh, when you first uh, when you create your first domain participant, but you can also uh, direct DDS to load profiles via APIs. There are load profiles APIs. There's also reload profiles APIs. Let's say you you've modified the contents uh, of a file or the, the definition of a profile, and you want Connects DDS to use the new value to create uh, new objects. So you could call it to, to reload the profiles. There's also unload profiles. Uh, XML parsing uh, takes up a lot of memory. And if you're only using QS profiles to create objects and you're only creating objects at initialization time, you can tell DDS to basically free up this memory uh, by unloading those XML profiles. And then, uh, as mentioned, the domain participant factory and the QS provider are basically uh, equivalent. It just depends on which language you're using. Now let's talk about how Connects DDS finds and loads the different sources that have the XML strings that define your QS libraries and QS profiles. But before we do that, let's note one thing. Uh, a named QS library may be defined in multiple files or multiple sources. Okay, So you have two different files that define the same QS library. That's OK. What ConnectDS will do is it'll basically take the contents or take the definitions for the same name library and merge them into one big definition for that QS library. What is not OK is you cannot have two definitions of the same named QS profile inside of a library. So if in one file you have a named library, and in that file you have a named QS profile, that's the only place that we should find that named QS profile for that library. We should not, it cannot find another file with a profile for the, with the same name for the same library, okay? So a named QS profile can only be defined once in a QS library. Now, let's start looking at all the different places uh, that ConnectDS will find or look for, and if found, uh, load your QS, your XML QS information. Um, we'll start with the first place, and this is the first place that ConnectDS will look. It's a file called NDDS QS profiles.xml. And where is it uh, coming from? It's going to look for that file in a directory uh, that is this directory. It will use an environment variable. So you will have to set an environment variable, NDDS home, to a directory. And under the NDDS home directory, there's going to be a resource, an XML directory. So in the NDDS home resource XML directory, if that directory exists, and if the ndds-qs-profiles.xml file exists, that file will automatically be loaded, okay? And it does not exist by default. We don't distribute a ndds-qs-profiles.xml file for you to use. Um, you'll have to create that yourself. Now, this method, this first method, actually exists uh, because uh, the original um, uh, versions of ConnectDDS that supported QS profiles uh, used this method to as one of the methods that it goes out and loads QS profiles. So it's a leg legacy and backwards compatibility uh, feature. Um, I would not actually recommend 
you use this uh, because there are better ways to tell GDS uh, uh, where which files you have or what files you have for GDS to load your XML QS profiles. As explained, the first place that DDS looks for uh, XML definition of your QS libraries and profiles is the file NDDS QS profiles.xml. The second place that connects DDS will look is in an environment variable called NDDS QS profiles. So you need to set this environment variable. And what do you set it to? Well, you set it to the location of all the files all the XML files that you're using to define the QS libraries and profiles that your application uses. So you can set it to a single file, you can send it to multiple files. If you're using, if you're setting it to multiple files, you use a semicolon to configure the multiple files. These are actually URLs uh, where the URLs are right now limited to a li either a local file um, with the prefix file colon slash slash or a string. Um, maybe uh, your application doesn't actually have access to a file system at runtime, so you could actually use a string and pass a string that um, is uh, uh, using XML formatting and, and then connects to DS will parse that string read from the environment variable and that string, the XML formatted string, would define your libraries and profiles. Um, in the future, uh, Connect DDS may support the ability to go online by supporting, for example, an HTTPS uh, server uh, in which it would download an XML uh, uh, profile definition. The third place that Connect DDS uh, will look for an XML definition is in a file called userqsprofiles.xml. User QS profiles at XML uh, will be uh, found in the current working directory. So you need to have a file called user QS profiles .xml in the current working directory of your of your running process. So when you start your application um, and you start DDS, where, wherever the current working directory is at that time, um, if there's a file called user QS profiles at XML, uh, it will be automatically loaded. Now. An example of this file will be generated by RTI DDS Gen when you invoke it with the minus example option. So RTI DDS Gen is the RTI utility that you use on IDL files. Uh, IDL files contain the definition of your data types. And uh, when you generate code using RTI DDS Gen, it can also generate a working example. And as a part of that working example, it'll create an example of the user QS profiles.xml file. So you could start with that file, or you could just create a file called user QS profiles.xml and store it in the current working directory. The fourth place that connects DDS will load uh, XML definitions from our files that you've set in code. So you will tell DDS in code via APIs where the files are. And you do this in the traditional C++ as well as the C or old C Sharp and Java APIs. Uh, you'll do this in the domain participant factory. So this is specifically in the factory QoS setting. So you'll use the factory QoS setting, okay? And you'll set uh, using the URL profile um, all the different locations of the different files uh, on the local disk. Um, and this URL profile is actually a sequence. So you can, uh, by modifying the length of the sequence, set the location of multiple files. Uh, when you're using the modern C++ or the new C Sharp API, you'll actually do this using the QS provider class. And when you instance a QS provider object, um, you can tell it within the in the constructor, uh, you can set one or more files there. The fifth and last place that Connects DDS will look for uh, to load XML definitions of your QS profiles are strings uh, that are set via the API. So in the API, uh, in code, you can set, X, set XML formatted strings that uh, will be parsed by Connects DDS to define your X, uh, QS profiles. Now, uh, why is this useful? Well, for some deeply embedded applications, uh, those hosts may not have a file system that's available to store XML formatted files. So instead, you can compile an XML formatted string that defines those QS profiles and libraries uh, as part of the executable. So they'll just be read out as the strings uh, from a string variable. 
Now, how do you do this? Uh, well, in traditional C++, again, C, old C Sharp, and Java, uh, this is done in the factory QoS. Um, and instead of using a URL underscore profile, you would use a string underscore profile. And a string under, underscore profile is a sequence of strings. And each profile, sh well, uh, you can set a string for each, each element of that profile. And that string actually has to be a complete definition. Um, it, uh, ConnectDDS doesn't expect uh, to uh, kind of concatenate all the strings together uh, for a definition. So your your string that you set for an element needs to be a complete definition, uh, starting with DDS and ending with the DDS tag. Uh, for modern C++, of course, this is done uh, on the QS provider object. Um, and this will be a string that you pass in as the into the QS provider constructor. Let's talk about URL groups. Um, you can use URL groups to specify multiple possible location for a single XML file. So when you deploy your system, maybe you're not exactly sure how it will be deployed and there can be different locate, you know, the XML file, um, since it's gonna be copied out to the deployment machine, um, not as a part of your executable, um, it may be located in, in different places, so and you're not sure exactly where. So what you can do, you can specify multiple uh, locations. And this syntax is valid anywhere we're using our URL group. So you could use it in the environment variable. You could use it in the API, okay? And the URLs can either right now be file colon slash slash or string colon slash slash. And what you do is you give it multiple URLs. You could say um, URL1, URL2, URL3, uh, any number of URLs with this bracket, with this uh, and a parallel lines uh, in separating different URLs. So what this is, does is this is a group, okay? You're telling uh, ConnectDDS, please load the first one that you find. And then once you find it, uh, you, you can ignore the rest of the URLs in this group, okay? So for example, we have this string here, file colon myqs.xml and then uh, local system profiles myqs.xml and finally a string that uh, defines uh, within the string itself the uh, library in QoS. Uh, what ConnectDDS will do is the first existing URL in that group will be loaded. So if myqs.xml in the current working directory is found, uh, it'll automatically load that. If that doesn't exist, I'll check the second URL. I'll check local systems profiles, myqs.xml. If that exists, it'll load that. And if that doesn't exist, it'll finally parse the string. So since strings always exist, um, it doesn't really make sense to have one multiple strings in a group because a string always exists. Um, and also, it doesn't make sense to have any URLs defined after the string for the same group uh, because uh, you know, again, once that string, since that, that string exists, once it uh, connects to DS, parses that string, it'll ignore anything that came after that string. So usually what you're going to want to do is have string colon slash slash as the last element in the group if no default files exist, if you're using strings at all. What are the best practices with loading uh, XML profiles? Um, first of all, note, okay, it is not necessarily an error if an XML file doesn't exist. If you told ConnectDDS, hey, these are files that you can load, and ConnectDDS doesn't find those files or doesn't find a file, uh, that's not an error, okay? Uh, because you may, the, the QS profiles uh, and libraries that are being used in your code to create DDS objects may not be defined in those files or those files may not define anything that you use. So if we don't find those files, that's okay. The error will show up, okay, if we don't, uh, if you use a QS library or a profile that has not yet been defined, that has not been defined. If you use something that hasn't been defined and it's because we didn't find the file, that's when it's an error. Just because we didn't find the file, it's not an error at that time. It's only when you try to use something from a file we didn't load, okay? That's when it's an error. So when you try to use a QS profile from a QS library that 
was not defined because we could not find the file. When you try to use that in a creation routine, um, when you try to create a DDS empty entity, that is when the problem will show up. That's when DDS will report the problem. Um, QS profiles, um, the XML QS files, if you are using QS profiles, they're actually a part of your deployed system. I mean, they, they're an integral part. Um, they're, they're part of the configuration and uh, they're, they're really part of what your application is. They, uh, these files should be shared under, uh, under configuration control. They're very much like source code. Um, you should not be writing your own version of the same library. It's just like you don't write your own version of a header file. Instead, uh, you know, if everyone's sharing um, QSs from a library, uh, that should be you know, done in a very formal way. Uh, you shouldn't write your own uh, XML fi file that defines a library that other people are defining. Um, another thing that you need to consider is how do you deploy these XML QS files with your application executable? Um, and you have your own methodology. I'm sure there's, you might, your system might use configuration files other than just what DDS requires. So however you do that uh, is probably the same way that you want to treat these XML files. The proper spelling of QS profile uh, names as well as QS library names is critical. Um, it is case sensitive. Um, and if we don't find uh, you know, a string with that exact uh, uh, definition, uh, that'll be an error. So what we recommend is instead of everyone type in that, typing in that string and perhaps making an error that can't be caught until runtime, okay, it'd be better to catch that error at development time and the way to catch that error is to let the compiler catch that error. So what we suggest is using uh, constant strings as defined in IDLs. Um, so you define the names of profiles and libraries as strings. Okay, and these will be compiled as strings into your uh, application, assuming the strings exist. Because if you type it in wrong, it'll be, uh, if you type in the reference to the strings wrong, the compiler will say, hey, I don't know what the symbol is. So, well, in your code, you'll use generated symbols, okay, uh, basically variables that contain those strings. So you use the myQS library symbol versus the string myQS library. If you, if you typed in myQS library wrong as a string, uh, you won't know until runtime that that library doesn't exist. But if you typed in myQS library wrong as a symbol, okay, the compiler will, will say, hey, I don't know what the symbol is and basically catch that typo. In summary, the definitions for your QS profiles can be loaded automatically, will be loaded automatically from files, uh, from environment variables that define where files are, um, from code that define where files are, or from strings. Uh, your environment variable can define XML formatted strings. Uh, XML formatted strings can be set via an API. And any number of these, any one of these, or any multiple of these uh, methods will be used to load the QS definitions that your application uses, the QS profile definitions that your application uses. There are APIs that uh, are provided to manually load uh, and reload profiles. Don't forget, when you reload a profile, you're changing the definition of the profile, but you're not going to change the QS of any uh, objects, any DDS entities that were al are already created. So if your entity is already created with a definition of the profile, now you modify that profile's definition, that created object's uh, QS is not changed. It's only mod your own, the QS modification is only applied to new objects created with that profile. Uh, for unloading profiles, um, this is very useful to release memory because parsing XML files, uh, files will actually consume quite a bit of memory, uh, more than you would guess. Um, and if you're not using a QS profile after initialization time, then at the end of initialization time, you can tell ConnectDDS to release that memory by uh, calling the unload memory uh, methods or unload profiles methods.